All right, let's continue section 4.1. Um, we're looking at linear equations right now. Um, so we have the cost in dollars for H hours of air conditioning repair is given by the equation. So we're going to input H because H is with the um, numbers, and we're going to output C. So H will be my X or my predictor in stat terms. So we're saying, can hours predict the cost? And so cost is my y or my response. So let's go ahead and find the cost for these three cases. I'm going to set it up in a table so that we're ready to graph in a second. So I always do x, y. So in this case, we will do h and cost. So we want to find the cost for a half hour, 0.5. We want to find the cost for an hour. We want to find the cost for 2.25 hours. So we're just going to plug in. We're going to do 30 plus 36 times 0.5. So just type everything at once um, or follow order of operations, but don't do 30 plus 36 enter times 0.5. This is wrong. So we're going to do 30 plus 36 times 0.5. I get a different answer. So just do everything at once. If you are doing it step by step, multiplication comes first. So it's not necessarily the order it's written. So $48 for half an hour. So again, type everything at once. So 30 for one hour, we get $66. So I'm just replacing the H and then we'll do it one more time and we'll plug in 2.25 hours. If you do second enter, you can just type back over and we get $111. So we input hours, we output cost. Cool. So I'm going to sketch a graph. Before I sketch the graph, I notice this one thing that says H is less than or equal to 10. Basically, this is telling me that they'll work 10 hours max. So I'm going to find the cost. Um, for 10 hours, just because that tells me the most that we'll have to pay. And that'll help me with the graph in a second. So we'll do this one more time, because um, this is basically the max cost, because they're not going to do any jobs over 10 hours. So the most we would possibly pay is $390 for 10 hours. And this is important, because this will help me scale the graph. So we're going to scale like we did back with histograms. Um, we'll just find a different scale for the horizontal and the vertical. Um, we're going to graph differently than before because only positive numbers make sense. So if we go back to this graph, right, we're basically only looking at the top corner because that's where everything's positive. And we can ignore the other three because negative numbers don't make sense for cost or time. Um, so X always goes on the bottom and Y goes up and down. So in this case, hours will be on the bottom and cost will go up and down. Um, if we want to think of a scale, I think I have 20 boxes in this direction. So the scale for H, 10 is the largest. So we'll do 20 over 10, which is 2. Oh, sorry, I'm doing that backwards. Long day. 10 over 20, right? We did boxes on the bottom. So we can count by halves. So that'll be a half. Usually if I count by halves, I just don't label the halves. So one half one, one and a half two, two and a half three, three and a half four. Hopefully that makes sense. You can label it, but I think the graph gets a little overwhelming if there's too many labels. And perfect, we end exactly at 10 hours. So if we want to scale the vertical, we're going to take the largest value, which is 390. And then boxes are different up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We only have ten up and down. And we get 39, which I am not counting by 39. So I'll probably round that up to 40 or 50. I'll probably just do 40. But we want to round to something a little bit nicer. So 0, 40, 80, 120. Go ahead and label. If you need more time, pause, and then we'll plot points together. So it's the same scaling we did back in chapter two. 50s would work as well, right? Going up to 50 would also make sense. 50 is a nice number to count by. 
So once you're ready, um, we're gonna go ahead and plot points. So our first point is a half and 48, so a half and 48. We just estimate that's okay that the numbers don't all show up. It's a little bit more than 40. We get one and 66, so one and 66 is maybe right there. Right, we're estimating and that's okay. 2.25 is halfway between two and two and a half, up to 111 would be slightly under 120. And then the 10 will help us draw a good line, so 10 and 390, so this one. And then hopefully we can connect them and make a nice line. Uh, it's really hard. Um, if you have something to make it straight, use it. All right, it's a straight line. Pretend it's as straight as possible, right? You get the idea. It's really hard to do on a tablet. And that's our line. Cool. So if you need to review plotting points, I'll add a video on plotting points. Um, and then let's go ahead and interpret the slope. So C was 30 plus 36H. So the slope is always the one in front of X or the variable, so 36. I'm gonna write it as 36 over one. And then remember it's the change in Y over the change in X, which I'm not gonna write right now. So the change in Y in this case would be cost. And my X was hours. So for each additional one hour, the cost goes up by $36. cost goes up or increases, I usually just use the word increase or decrease, by $36. And that's it. Cool, I'll see you in the next video.